Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending the Lane Avenue Shared Use Path virtual meeting. We really appreciate you guys uh, giving up a little bit of your time this evening to join us and to discuss the future project. As Jackie had mentioned, I'm going to start with the introduction and uh, go through the agenda with you guys. Um, the project history is going to be done by our assistant city manager and then our public service director will get into the proposed project and next steps. At the end of the presentation, um, I will be the moderator for the Q&A. So the, your, your opinion really matters to us. So as we go through this meeting, I, I'd like to share with you how um, it's best to communicate with us. There should be a chat box at the bottom of Zoom that you can enter into and share any comments or questions that you have. Um, after the presentation, we'll go through the questions. Um, I will read them and try to direct them to the appropriate person. And then if there are a lot of questions, uh, we will keep track of all of them and provide a written response. So if you see this email address right here, it's for Mandy DeSanto. Uh, you may wanna write that down. Uh, you can reach out to her and provide your contact information and um, we will make sure that you get a written response. So let's start with some introductions for the team. Uh, Jackie Thiel is our assistant city manager. And as I mentioned, she'll be going over the history. Uh, Janie Hollingsworth is our public service director. She'll be giving the project overview. I am Carla Odebrowski, the city engineer. Uh, I have Sebastian French and Chad Ritzler. They are both engineering coordinators. And we have Mandy DeSanto, the management assistant, and usually the first line of contact if you need to reach somebody. We also have Emily Worley listening in. If there are any questions for our design team uh, for, from Burgess and Nightbull. And with that, I will turn it over to Jackie. Thank you, Carla. Can everyone hear me? Okay, I just wanna make sure. Um, I, again, thank you all for joining us tonight. A lot of exciting things going on in Upper Arlington. And so um, this is one of them. We wanna share kind of how we got to this point and uh, how we're gonna be moving forward. So back in 2018, um, uh, our Parks and Recreation Department completed a comprehensive study. And one of the things that came out of that study um, was that residents ranked walking and biking facilities as a top priority in our community. So um, I think over the last you know, five or six years, you've probably seen us do a lot when it comes to connectivity in our community and really trying to promote active transportation where we can and um, get those neighborhood connections filled in. So in 2019, um, that's really when we began to hear about um, quarry trails and get excited about it. And um, quarry trails is the 20th Metro Park coming to Central Ohio, very really, really close to Upper Arlington, really exciting for us. So um, the city of Upper Arlington underwent a connectivity study um, and we kind of partnered with Hilliard and Dublin and Franklin County and Columbus to look at that. And I'll go into a little bit more detail later on. Um, in 2020, we were awarded with a state capital grant of $300,000 to help uh, fund this connection on Lane Avenue. And then in 2021, where we are now, um, we've started, just started the design phase. So we're just in that kickoff phase, um, gathering public input and wanna share with you guys where we are to, at this point. Um, this project is scheduled for construction in 2022. And then as we look um, beyond 2022, uh, we look at future connectivity. And I'll talk about um, some of the other bigger projects in central Ohio that are kind of driving this, this active transportation and connectivity. So next slide. So why are we doing this? Why do we think it's important to implement an east-west pedestrian and bike connection? Um, so I, I wanted to share with you all tonight, this is um, from our public GIS site, 
And what you can see here is um, existing sidewalk, park paths, and shared use paths. So you can see that on the east side of the city, we have a lot of red going on. And as you get closer to Riverside Drive um, going west, you kind of see where we have a lot of gaps here. And when we're looking at the Quarry Metro Park, that um, the southern border of that is Treview, the western border is Dublin Road, and then it goes up to where Dublin Road curves towards Riverside Drive. That's a really big area. Um, the future of that metro park is going to be huge, but you can see that that kind of aligns where we have this huge pedestrian connectivity gap in Upper Arlington. So that's where we started to look at Lane Avenue. So Rapid Five, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but um, I really want to bring it to your attention. This is a um, little bit even bigger than just Central Ohio um, project, but it is, um, it's a vision for how communities can grow with nature. So um, there's, there's been a look at, it's called Rapid Five because we're looking at the five major waterways um, that lead into Central Ohio. So it looks at the Big Darby, it looks at Scioto, Olin Tangy, Allen Creek, and Big Walnut. Obviously, for our purposes, we're, we're concentrating on that Scioto connection and then to the east, the Olentangy connection. But what this project really wants to do is connect our natural green infrastructure and waterways um, and promote that active transportation. So how can we get our communities connected to these greenways? And how can there be economic growth along these greenways where we're connecting people to get to them by bike um, and walking. Um, so this, this is a project where pretty much every um, community in Central Ohio is a sponsor to, um, and it's kind of in that preliminary phase um, where, um, you know, for, for Upper Arlington, we are part of the team looking at the Scioto and the Olentangy River. Um, so where I want to lead all of you to is um, they do have an interactive map where they're collecting public comment right now. So I think it's really important to get your voice out there and learn more about this Rapid 5 project. So if you go to therapidproject.org, all one word, therapidproject.org, or you just type in um, Rapid 5 in Google, it will bring you to this, the page and then you'll see where you can um, click on the interactive map and you can leave comments and see what other people have commented um, when they're talking about how to promote these, these connections. So looking a little bit closer at Quarry Trails Metro Park, um, I, I mentioned before it's the 20th uh, Metro Park coming to Central Ohio and who would have thought Upper Arlington would be adjacent to a metro park. I know when I started with this city eight years ago, I definitely did not see a metro park coming. So very, very exciting for us. Um, the potential for our residents is just amazing. Um, so this, this um, Quarry Trails is, I, I got an update on where we are. I know that COVID delayed some of the openings a little bit. Um, but they're shooting for this fall to have the phase one opening. Um, so there's kind of two lakes that go along with this. And that's this phase one is the area closest to Treview um, in Dublin area, Dublin Road. And there's a south basin um, that's going to be open this fall with an upper and lower pond. Um, there's going to be a waterfall and an outlook. Um, a lot of trails and kayaking that's supposed to start this fall as well. Um, and then in 2022, they're looking at a greenways um, trail on the west side of the, the Scioto River um, that connects um, all of that land from Treby Road up to Dublin Road where it curves back by Scioto. Um, so the, the overall park, you can see some pictures here of um, these were pictures taken at the park as it is today, and they're doing a lot of things um, to make this more exciting. But in the long term, they want to have rock climbing um, and 
possibly some rapids, um, but it's 62 acres. Um, other things are, you know, picnicking, canoeing, fishing, paddle boarding. So a lot of really exciting things really close to our front door. This is kind of a view. So along with the Metro Park, there's also Wagenberger that is doing um, private development there too. So you can see there that um, this is kind of a, a mock exhibit of uh, pedestrian feature overlooking some of that mixed use area. So there's going to be some residential, um, some retail, definitely restaurants overlooking the water, all of this connected um, through the park area. So going back to 2019 when Upper Arlington did the Quarry Trails Connectivity Study, um, you can go to the next slide. You know, we really looked at, so we looked at Upper Arlington as a whole. And as I mentioned, um, you know, this is kind of a snapshot of the one connection here, but we've also looked at um, connections further north as this park develops, because it's kind of developing from the south at Trinity Road North. Um, and so that's why we're kind of concentrating on Lane Avenue now. But we've also done a feasibility study at Canterbury Road to see um, about crossing there, crossing Riverside Drive there, and then all the way up to Zollinger. So um, the city has some alternatives for connectivity all throughout the corridor from Cambridge all the way north to Zollinger. So this look takes a little bit closer look at Lane Avenue and how we got to where we are today. So when you look at um, you know, our connectivity as it is today, you see you know, Tremont, uh, what we did there a few years back and connecting the Kingsdale Shopping Center, the Tremont Shopping Center, some of our um, new shared use paths and existing share roads. Um, so we have a good north-south connection there and now we're working on that east-west connection. Um, and this is where we're trying to tie Lane Avenue into all of this. So when we first came to this with the connectivity study, it showed that shared use path on Lane Avenue from Riverside Drive all the way to Tremont. If you go to the next slide, you can see kind of where we're um, looking today. So um, that Lane Avenue shared use path between Asbury and Tremont does um, have some, some bigger impacts that we need to look at closer. You know, our, our hope and vision is someday that we can make that full connection to Tremont Road. Um, but we know that there's going to be a lot of tree impacts. And one of the biggest hurdles is there is a stream that goes in between there, north, south. So crossing that stream makes this a, a bigger project that we may have to look at, um, you know, how we would widen that stream crossing as it is today to accommodate bike and pedestrian paths. So that's where we came up with, well, let's at least get people as far as we can on Lane Avenue without getting into these bigger impacts um, and making that connection to the neighborhoods there. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to our service director, Janie Hollingsworth. She's gonna kind of walk through the, the proposed project and where we are today um, as we continue to gather feedback. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I'm relatively new to the city of Upper Arlington. Uh, I've been here less than six months. And however, I bring a wealth of knowledge and I hope to bring um, more to this project and hope to answer your, all of your questions as we move forward. I have received a lot of feedback already, uh, emails that I've received and also some phone calls and certainly enjoyed those conversations. It helps me understand a little bit of the intricacies and certainly we, I've been working with our uh, design team that we've established here with the city. Um, so I'm very grateful to be here. I'm grateful to serve you and I'm grateful to um, kind of walk through the project with you. So kind of what I'm going to go through is uh, just a basic overview. There was a lot of questions that were asked and some of the uh, emails that I received as well as the phone calls. So I'm going to try to address some of that. I know that there will still be follow-up questions and I, and I welcome those opportunities to speak with you. Uh, so if we can go ahead and go through the next slide, we're gonna hit on Lane Avenue first. So when I started here, I looked at 
you know, why are we doing this project and what the importance of it is. And Jackie had said about the Metro Park, and never did I realize how big and expansive this will go. The first 62 acres is the fall, supposedly the fall of 2021, but the ultimate build out will be over 220 acres, and the entire development, I think, is over 600. That's an enormous amount of opportunity to enjoy recreation and enjoy a, a, a park right in the heart of a city. And that's just really unheard of. And um, so I'm hoping that, you know, it's definitely Upper Arlington will benefit greatly by having this and um, will enjoy uh, for many, many years to come. So when I looked at this, we had just put a dot right in the middle of Quarry Park. And where is that two mile radius? And you can see as it stretches here, this neighborhood all along in here has such a huge benefit. And we look at bike lanes and connectivity to a park like that, you know, within that two mile radius, that's something that families can do, go and enjoy. Some of your more experienced riders will go further out and will potentially hopefully touch many of our other residents in the city. But uh, for two miles, um, we, we've got this uh, the heart of the uh, upper Arlington that can really enjoy it. And when you look at this whole neighborhood, how do you get to it? And if we don't build a connection over to it, that really minimizes the opportunity for you to enjoy the park. So that's part of why Lane Avenue is uh, being in, uh, installed, the shared use path, and that's being looked at. And I certainly am uh, excited to see what happens over the next three to five years with this connectivity. So next yeah, slide. While you're on that slide, I just wanted to add, I forgot to mention, um, you know how we've been working with partner communities, um, Franklin County is part of that. And when they, they're they doing a, a rebuild of Treadview Bridge Road, and um, there's two bridges actually there on Treadview Road as you go west uh, from Riverside Drive. And when they rebuild those bridges, they are going to be adding um, a 10 foot wide shared use path that crosses those. So I forgot to mention that, sorry. So Lane Avenue, all of you've driven this um, probably routinely and some of you daily. It's got a lot of traffic volume. The speed sometimes can be really uh, high coming through there. Um, and you have a lot of large volume trucks. We have an immense amount of construction happening and they're all coming in and out of that quarry through and utilizing that la the Lane Avenue area. So the reality of the, you know, could you put the bikes and the pedestrians into the roadway? And quite frankly, that's not an option. Uh, that's from a volume and standpoint, um, placing a bicycle and, and the pedestrians in the street, we have to come up with an alternative. So that shared use path, when you look down um, Lane Avenue here, this is um, where it would go approximately right there with the grass area. So that's why we are really uh, looking into um, adding that shared use path on Lane Avenue. So what is a shared use path? You can look here on the left, uh, it showed kind of similar to the wall that you see along Lane Avenue. It's eight foot wide, so it's a little extra wide uh, so that you can have a bicyclist, you can have a family um, walking hand in hand across it. It's very similar to what you'll see on Northam. And then we have a 12 foot wide tree lawn and then of course the, the pavement and then the country club on the other side. Um, again, taking a look at it, uh, you'll see the wall that that sidewalk shared use paths would go right behind, um, or right in front of the wall and in between the trees. So what are some of the benefits of the shared use path? And a lot of it's safety, as we talked about, health, opportunity to get out fresh air and exercise. Uh, again, to go into an area that's really a kind of a natural habitat is really a pleasure for everyone to enjoy. Connectivity, we're, accessing the trails, libraries, parks, and other destinations. And of course, the environment's great that we can help reduce some motor trips and vehicle trips if we can. So I'm seeing some things on the chat there about why don't we put it on the south side? It makes the most logical sense. And certainly when I looked at this, I said, hey, let's, why can't we, can we put it on that south side right next to the country club? Um, and that way we can avoid being on the other side. There's several issues with it. Um, one being here, I don't know, Carla, if you can point there on the uh, 
north side where all the trees are. There's not a lot of area, um, just down a little bit lower. There we go. Right there, those trees um, would ultimately have to be removed. Those are some pretty large trees that will have to happen uh, to, to basically form that path and that right of way there. The other challenge is you kind of go through, there's a lot of grade issues uh, with it. There's a lot of drop-offs and I'll show you a slide in the next one, but I want to get down a little bit further uh, along the path along Lane Avenue. If you Once you get down to a Riverside, the bottom left, if you remember coming in off the of Riverside and you're turning in on Lane Avenue, there's a nice big boulder that's going there. It's the founding, um, it's you know when Upper Arlington was founded, the grade, it slopes right up, straight up, uh, and then continues on all the way along that side. So by putting it there, there's a lot of work that would have to be done, quite frankly, not feasible from a cost standpoint. There's another major issue with this on how do you get the people that would enjoy and benefit of the Metro Park connectivity is all the neighborhood on the north side. How do you get them across to get to the shared use path? Uh, crossing lane, I tell you, I tried uh, the other day, I was out trying to take pictures. I wanted to come down over here on the other side to get pictures and I just couldn't do it. I didn't feel safe enough to do that. So trying to get people to run across Lane Avenue to get to the shared use path down to the signal uh, at Riverside wasn't a feasible option. Um, so again, from a cost standpoint, the geometrics, um, the tree removal, the, the, that solution was a little bit difficult to being able to provide that. So if we can go to the next slide, you kind of see some of the grade challenges. They drop off uh, all the way through. So there's um, areas all along uh, that would have that issue. So it, again, if you drive by, take a look at it, um, you'll see that uh, in numerous spots where we have some uh, more challenges, but you can see the trees and the, the shrubs there that we would have to remove all along that portion of Lane Avenue. So the loss of trees, the no direct, direct connection across Lane Avenue and, and the excessive cost, it determined it was not a feasible opportunity or alternative at this time. So the next alternative, um, as Jackie had mentioned, here's tree, Tremont's all the way on the right side and of course Lane as it bends. Uh, right at Asbury, where the solid yellow line br bring, um, is shown all the way to Riverside on the north side. That's where the shared use path will go. And, rec and then as you see the red future path connection, Jackie mentioned that there's a lot more that's happening. Treyview Road, uh, Riverside um, shared use path. There's a whole connectivity to make it very easy to get into the Metro Park. So the north side, we have it. And then if we don't, if we can't extend it, there were some challenges here um, with the, some trees and the removals. At this point in time, this project uh, isn't going to extend it. It'd be nice if we could extend it all the way to Tremont. That would make that direct connection. But since we can't, we know that there's a potential that if bicyclists come down to Tremont, they're not really going to be able to get in onto the bike lane, and they're probably going to go to Onondaga over to uh, Asbury to connect over. So we're anticipating that there will probably be some additional uh, connectivity of bicyclists and possibly joggers, runners, uh, that will, will utilize that area and then connect over. Next slide. So here's a kind of a scaled in version um, of preliminary plans. Uh, what we'll look at here, here's Riverside on the west, on your, the left side of your a screen. Uh, there's a, pro, some proposed landscaping wall limits that will go in. We'll put in some, um, like a retaining wall in that area. Uh, it will extend across into Leeds. We have that wide tree lawn. We went with a, a bigger tree lawn just because of the, the old trees and the canopy that they have, um, the root structure and how big they are. We needed a little extra room to make sure that we stay away from those root path connections through it. And it continues further down. So we'll look at this section a little bit more in detail on the next slide. So that Riverside, we have uh, you can see that we have the right turn movement. Uh, many of you 
probably driven by through here and I've tried to walk into this area. Uh, it seems like there's some people that have thrown quite a bit of bottles and trash into this area. Part of this project would look at extending the shared use path, but it also cleans up this area a lot more. And then we'd also look at when you're crossing the roadway, what do we need to do from an enhancement standpoint uh, to improve that safety to cross once that shared use path comes in over at Riverside. But to, today, uh, when you go out there, if you had to walk and cross over the Riverside, that's pretty difficult. And as a right turner that, that has the green light turning um, and a pedestrian uh, being in that area, it, it certainly, uh, we need to open that up so that we can see the the pedestrians there. So this portion of it would definitely be cleaned up on um, some beautification of it and uh, we'd put place into the retaining wall as well. Moving further um, down to Asbury, uh, again we can we have the sidewalk connectivity. We've Right now we've uh, meandered a little bit. Uh, we have a large tree there uh, that we kind of bend the sidewalk and then we continue on to over to Asbury. Once we get done with this meeting, I know that there are many residents along this corridor that may have a lot of detailed questions of what is it going to happen in front of my property? How is that going to look? How do we handle the driveways? All those details. And we welcome those calls to work with you one on one at a much more, um, you know, face to face level that we can kind of work with you and see how we meander that sidewalk um, across the, the property line. And once you get to Asbury, I have talked to several people and the concerns about this curve. And certainly standing over here, I was right in front of the curve area, the speed of the roadway that it comes around the corner. If you're standing there, you're feeling a pretty uncomfortable. And we got to figure out a way to help resolve that and make those enhancements, safety enhancements, so that we can improve that area as it comes on the curve. Um, the, interestingly enough, I've checked back to see has the chevrons, the signs, the um, the delineators on the roadway, have they been hit routinely or is that something a maintenance item that we have? And it hasn't been happening other than maybe when the, the snow uh, occurrences um, that someone maybe uh, hit those at that during that time. But where it's happening is a little bit further uh, beyond the curve and that's where it seems like they're hitting that one tree. Uh, you'll see that there's some damage on the curb level and uh, they'll come into onto the grassy area. So part of this project, we need to look at what can we do to enhance it. This can go to the next slide. So what are those enhancements that we need to look at? So when you come and drive on Lane Avenue, you see the curb warning signs and the flashing lights, but sometimes they're just a little bit uh, hidden in the trees and you come up on it. And so we need to figure out how do we lay out the signage in a little bit better manner um, to give some more awareness of those drivers and the speed. Uh, so how can we traffic calm, calm that traffic through there? Um, we're still in bed get, investigating some ideas through this curve, but I think we can do a lot better to help with this so that when we pl uh, place this, uh, the sidewalk, the shared use path, that we have a much more comfortable and a safe area. When you come around the curve, if you're coming a little too fast, you can actually kind of almost see it. The, cur the roadway kind of shifts and it almost pushes you um, more into the curb area. And so if you're taking that curve at a little bit higher speed than you should, um, that's where you're, you're kind of getting it to where you're coming into the grass area. We wanna make sure that those pedestrians, uh, bicyclists, bicyclists are protected. Um, there is options to possibly explore uh, a, some barrier type, much more decorative, uh, not the standard concrete uh, type of barrier, but something that looks aesthetically well, but also forms, um, it performs a benefit from a safety perspective, just in case someone does come around that curve. We can place all the signs and warning devices in the world up, but there's some drivers that choose to go a little bit more faster. And when that happens, we need to um, protect those pedestrians in the curve area. The next slide. Bike sheriffs. Um, bike sheriffs, and I've got a picture here. You've seen them on Tremont, uh, the bike with an arrow. Interestingly, I worked for the city of Denver back in the 90s and the early 2000s, about 12 years. 
And it was this Shero was pioneered by a guy named by the name of James McKay. And Denver supported that and did a lot of Federal Highway Administration um, studies to see where is Shero's beneficial, where do we place them, and how do we put them in. In the initial part, the city was very adamantly against. They didn't want Shero's, they didn't want sidewalks, they didn't want any of that. And so one of the ways that they've got around it to help support the bicyclists and also bring awareness was to place what they called Shero's. It's actually at that time, it's called a bike in a house. It looked like a house with a bicycle in it, and it's evolved over time. But I've had ability to look at it from the onset of when do you place in Sharos and how do they benefit you? Um, and I want to go through some of those benefits for you on what that looks like and, uh, and how it can improve uh, some of that safety on that on Onondaga. The Shero is not a bike lane. It's, it's essentially the primary existence of it is, is to be where cyclists and bike drivers um, vehicles coexist. It's an awareness level that we basically remind bicyclists, bicyclists and motorists that the roadway must be shared. And I spent some time out there um, on Onondaga and Asbury and many of the other roadways out there. You have some construction activity that's going on. Uh, hopefully that's it's temporary, it'll change and cycle out. Um, and you have some landscapers come in and out, but what the Shero does, it helps remind people that when you're driving through there, you can probably expect to see bicyclists. And while I was out there, sure enough, uh, there was several bicyclists going in throughout the area and on the roadway. The benefit of having these, it benefits the community at that whole neighborhood um, today by bringing that extra awareness. Hey, there's some things that are happening in the roadway. Do we need to slow down? Do we need to... Um, do something different to make sure that we're aware of what's happening in the road. So that's an option. Um, the one thing that we found in the studies, it definitely brought up awareness uh, to motorists when they drove through, they started to think about it and think about it. When you drive on Tremont, some of those roadways and you see the bike share, it does um, make you look for, see where are the bicyclists at. Uh, and it also encouraged safe passing. Um, we found that if a motorist need to um, drive around it, they gave the, the bicyclist a much wider area to maneuver. So there's a lot of benefits. I think by having it in, in now implemented, um, definitely, I mean, we're, it would be a great benefit because we're not gonna really see this bike connectivity happen for a little time until we really build out the Metro Park and also some of the bike connectivity through Upper Arlington. So what happens now for, we? I know you have a lot of questions, a lot of feedback. I know there's some opposition to the project. I know there's a lot of support for the project. So we, we wanna hear the feedback uh, and we will take that. Carla's gonna read through some of the questions that we have today. Uh, and um, we can go through those uh, during this meeting, but we can also, if you, weren't able to stay the full distance where you know a neighbor that wants to provide any additional feedback, please feel free to reach out with out to us, uh, coordinate with Mandy. I'm happy to set up a meeting or a phone call and work through any design issues that you have. So any project updates, um, if you want a project update, we would like to uh, distribute those out. Um, please email Mandy. It's only, we only distribute um, the any in information that's related to the project. Uh, so just let Mandy know if you want to be on that distribution. So what's next for the design? The draft plan is starts is this summer. We should have that. Um, the final plan goes in for November 2021 and then construction in 2022, as Jackie had mentioned. 